Hello everyone and welcome back to Crafts with Crashly. Today I'm going to do something just a little bit different. We are going to paint this super cute elf picture. I am going to be using a acrylic paint. I'll show you the general colors of each paint that I am using. Um, but again, don't try to match it perfectly. It's totally okay. Um, you can kind of customize this picture however you'd like. Um, and yeah, let's have some fun. We're going to first start with a background color. Uh, to do this, I just double dipped my brush. I dipped half of it in the white, other half in the blue, and kind of just kept going in an up and down motion. And we did this all over the canvas to have a general background color. Once I had the background finished, I went ahead and created a border around the canvas. Now I decided to do a black curvy border with some white polka dots. Yours does not have to match mine exactly. Um, kind of make it whatever colors you want. I started out with a medium brush to kind of make my lines how I wanted them to make the actual curves. And then I just colored it in all around the canvas. So after I did the outside border, again I went a little basic, you do not have to do the same design. I let it dry for a little bit and then I went through and did the sides. Um, I just kind of fast forward there. Um, so everything is dry, I have all of the sides painted um, and that's just to make the canvas look a little bit neater than them just being left 
white. Um, so I went ahead and I got that out of the way. And this is where you could add any little designs you want within the black or whatever color you went with. Um, I just decided to go a little bit more basic, so I just did white polka dots. Um, since I'm doing a circle, I used a really thin brush so I could get the per like as close to perfect as I could in a round circle. And then I just went through and just painted on the little circles. And I could have gotten super fancy and did little designs like snowflakes and stuff. Um, which you are welcome to do. Again, this is just, just the border. So I'm going to take these white circles all the way around. Once I had my polka dots the way I wanted them, I let it dry for a little bit. Once I let it sit for a few minutes, I am getting ready to draw the outfit. And I put a pencil line in the middle of the canvas because I tend to eyeball things wrong. Um, and then I outlined with a chalk paint marker which is absolutely optional for me i like doing outlines in the chalk paint markers um, because it adds some depth um, and also it kind of helps me paint inside neater now i'm going through and making the outlines and again, this part does not have to look perfect. It actually, I think, adds more character in, you know, realism, realism if it's not super symmetrical. Once you have that the way you want it to look, we will move on drawing the legs and the outline, the pencil mark that I made in the middle of the picture. It does erase just fine, just in case you didn't go over it. You know, with the paint, you can just go ahead and remove those lines and it comes right off. Let's blow the shavings off. Okay, can't see it anymore. Now we'll move on. It's fixing my music. I'm kind of trying to eyeball where I want the legs to stop because I want to make sure I have enough room for his little elf booties. So now I'm just outlining his legs.
Now I'm going to begin drawing the outline of his shoes. I'm going to begin with some zigzags uh, for the tops of the shoes where his legs go in. And then I'm going to make the, the tips of his shoes come to a curve. And again, don't worry about making the shoes perfectly matching because it really doesn't matter. You can't tell. <laughs> and it just adds character. And if you are doing the outline of this like I'm doing here, um, also keep in mind the lines don't have to be perfect because we're going to be going over the outline with paint. So if there is something you'd like to fix or, um, I don't know, make a line or a section a little bit wider, you can do that with your paint. This is just to kind of keep everything semi-symmetrical when you do the paint. Um, just have a steadier hand, it seems, with a marker, which makes the actual filling in with the paint so much easier. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put a, um, yep, see, they're not perfect, but <laughs> now I'm gonna put a round circle at the tip of each shoe. And they're gonna be like, little bells. Then I'm going to move on to uh, doing the outline of his belt. I'm going to start with the buckle, which is going to be a large square and a smaller square on the inside. I'm just trying to get it as close to the middle as possible. And that's his, doing his actual belt part now off of the buckle. And that just kind of helps me gauge how big I want the outside square to be in comparison with the actual belt itself. And I have it going up and kind of like a curve just to give it um, some realism. There you have it. That is the full outline of our elf. Now once you have the outline the way you want it, we're going to start painting in his shirt. Um, to do that I used just a, a medium brush and then I used a mixture of some green and yellow. And I did the same kind of double dip that we did for the background with the green and the yellow. It seems like it gives it some dimension. Um, I will say when you choose your green and yellow shade, um, it does look the best if they are bright colors. Like you don't want to do a, a dark forest kind of green, um, unless you want to add some shadowing or something at the end. But when I think of elves and Christmas, I think bright colors, so you have a brighter green and a yellow. And doing the double dip, where you have one side dipped in green and the other side dipped in the yellow, that kind of, it'll do streaks of both colors, but then they'll kind of merge together to make it uh, shadowy. So they'll be separate, but it just adds that dimension and it looks really cool. So we're gonna fill in the entirety of the shirt.
I took my time a little bit more when I got to the edges of the border because I wanted to keep my lines nice and neat. I just laid my brush flatter, went slower. Once his shirt is completely filled in, we're going to let this dry before we move on. And acrylic paint dries pretty quickly. Um, you can take a hair dryer, uh, just press the button where it's not heat, um, or you can just let it sit for a little bit to dry. Once the shirt is nice and dry, we are going to work on the belt buckle. We'll do the outside in yellow. Um, but to get the yellow to really come through, I did one coat of white on the outside buckle part. So I'm gonna just do the one coat of white, let it dry, and then I'm gonna paint it yellow. And then we're gonna add some brown just to give it some shadowing dimension. And we're gonna wait for this to drag completely before we apply the yellow. Once the white is completely dry, we're going to start painting the outside of the buckle yellow I'm using brown to do some shadowing. And the shadowing is just where you apply just a tiny little bit um, and we're just going to do a couple small stripes of it as a, a nice dimensional effect to it. And doing the white layer first before the yellow really makes the yellow pop, um, which is why we did it that way. And then we'll move on to painting the actual belt itself red. After the buckle is yellow, um, and we're going to add the smidge of brown for the shadowing, I like to do that while the actual yellow is still wet. Um, so don't let it dry completely, and it makes the brown kind of fade off. This gives it more realism look. And do not overload your brush when you're doing the brown, um, as if you overdo it, it's not going to have the same effect. In this case, less is definitely more. <laughs> and this is a, a much smaller brush as well. Um, I'm just lightly dipping it, um, which kind of makes it run into the yellow. And gives it a fading sort of look. Applying the brown, I did put uh, more emphasis around where I wanted the actual out outer layer of the buckle to be. Um, but again, I didn't apply too much brown to my brush. I kind of used what was already on there, so it gives it a fading brown yellow look. making 
sure I don't have any big globs of brown. If I do, I'm just merging it in with the yellow. Like something like that. Now I'm going to move on to painting the actual belt, filling that in with a bright red color. I'm just doing the outer lines first to make sure it's the size that I'm wanting to get. And then I will fill the insides in. Now we are going to work on the elf's socks. Um, to start that off, I'm going to do a coat of white. Um, and I made my elf socks uh, red and white stripes. So I'm going to start off with the white. Um, and then I may let that sit for a little bit and do another coat depending on how bright it comes out. So just going to fill in the legs for now, just regular white. Now we're going to let this dry completely and then we'll go back through and do the red stripes. Once we have our stripes filled in, we are going to let the paint dry before we move on to the shoes. For the shoes, um, I started off by painting them yellow, um, and then I went back through and I used some brown to add some dimension and shadow. Um, not a super dark brown, just kind of a tan around the bottoms and the edges. And then I kind of cleaned off my brush and made the yellow and the brown come together. Gave it a really cool effect.
now we're going to go back through and add yellow circles at the points of his shirt, and like little bells. over the bells on his shoes as well because um, that yellow looks like it got a little brown to me so I'm just going back over the bells on his shoes now we are going to do the shadow underneath his feet that come up in between his shoes to do that I used watered down gray. Um, I actually didn't have any gray paint on hand, so I just mixed some black and white together um, just to make that shadow there. And again, we're gonna go underneath his shoes and in between the two shoes as well. Um, when you're doing this part, start off small um, and then make your way, you know, to make it thicker, like to fill up the space in between the shoes. Just because if you go too dark or you do too much, the gray will just be overbearing and it will no longer look like a shadow. So definitely be careful with this. Um, and it is watered down gray. There's a little bit more paint than there is water. Um, but it is watered down a bit. here I noticed my gray was getting it was looking pretty dark so I added some more white since I had to mix mine so that's why you see it trans like get kind of lighter in my shadow which is totally fine if the gray that you have you feel like it's too dark because you do want it to resemble a shadow now I'm going to go back through and use some black and I'm adding X's just for accents to the bells. Okay, this next part can be a little tricky. This is going to be the strand of lights. I used a pencil, just how I did at the beginning to kind of mark where I wanted my loops on my lights to go. Um, and again, if you end up wanting to make your loops bigger or a different you know, thickness, you're gonna go back over it with paint. You shouldn't be able to see the pencil marks. Um, if pencil does show where you end up painting, it comes right off with the eraser. Uh, the color of the light strand, I'm using a dark green. This one is kind of like a forest green for the actual strand itself. And I'm gonna use a pretty thin brush with a nice straight end to make sure I can get those curves in there. And when you go around your loops, you may have to rotate your brush a little bit. Uh, if you feel more comfortable using a, a thinner brush than that, you can get the same effect. You'll just have to go over it a couple times to make the loops have the right definition look.
being perfect, um, let it dry just for a few minutes before you start working on the actual lights. We are going to paint the actual lights on the strands. We're going to outline with a thin brush and then paint them in. You can choose any colors you'd like for this part. Um, if you're looking to get a brighter color, feel free to outline and paint in white first and then go over with your color. Definitely not required, just another option. Have the sides of the lights filled. I'm going to go back to that same light and add in some white to give them a shiny kind of look. And I'm going to continue this for each light and you're going to have any amount of lights on your strand that you want. Actually, think I'm going to come back in and add one more light and try to brighten up these colors some. Um, so I think I'm going to paint over them with white and then try to recolor them. And I'm going to try to add one more extra light. Before we go back through, I did add one extra light. Um, I also went back through and painted over um, the lights and recolored them to make the colors pop more. I think it turned out pretty nice. I really hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, I definitely enjoyed making it. I look forward to making many more just like it. If you have any suggestions on what you would like me tutorial to paint, definitely leave them in the comments below. Um, again, thank you all for being here and showing me your support. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button so you don't miss any more content.